on a sultry day in Cincinnati, Ohio. This little neighborhood right here on a typical spring summer day would you hear the music playing. You'd be able to have a nice uh, uh, cup of coffee or a glass of wine here at the outdoor cafe. Streets are deserted. Parks abandoned. Playgrounds idle. I've got people that have, that have basically said they're not going to leave the house for six weeks. Across the city, an eerie sound fills the air with a sense of foreboding, accompanied by the smell of death. It is a rather pungent uh, odor of decay. In the queen city of the Ohio, some people don't dare step outside, knowing one of their most deep-seated fears will slap them right in the face. Get off of me! This is what has the people of Cincinnati and other Eastern American cities flinching, brushing, and swatting. This particular area that we're in, the cemetery pride, had over a million cicadas emerge over the course of a week. They are called 17-year cicadas, two-inch long insects that lie dormant underground for 17 years until some mysterious signal triggers a mass migration upward. When the ground temperature reaches uh, around 64 degrees Fahrenheit, usually the day or a day or two after a good soaking rain to soften our clay soil, the nymphs crawl out of holes in the ground and they crawl up an upright surface and they lock their little legs in place and then they split their, their exoskeleton down the back and slowly, slowly, you see the all white adult cicada. The transformation from cicada nymph to adult cicada is one of the wonders of nature, something seen only once every 17 years, and this is just the beginning. They then uh, form, turn into this, uh, gradually into this wonderful red-eyed, black-bodied, orange-winged cicada that you see here. This is called an emergence, but for some people, it's a plague. It's a phenomenon. This is, a, this is an emergence of arthropods of biblical proportions. In the Cincinnati area alone, the number of emerging cicadas is estimated at between five and seven billion. Tens of billions more have emerged throughout the eastern United States, all driven by a song. Listen. This is the sound of a six-week serenade, a chorus of carnal desire sung in billion-part harmony by cicadas seeking sex. There's an awful lot of competition for mates when you have seven billion insects. So they get together, all the guys, and they sing and attract the females to mate. And that's the sole purpose of the number of these insects, is to go ahead and mate to procreate the species for 17 years from now. With billions of bugs on the move, it can be a fine line between emergence and emergency. Last time I was driving my car and one flew in the window, went down my shirt and I wrecked my car because I would just want berserk trying to get this thing out of my shirt. There are so many cicadas flying, crawling, and climbing, they can bring a major city to its knees. Outdoor activities and many, many public forums have been canceled. They've moved university graduations, church celebrations. We've been called to find out, should we move it inside? Well, if you're gonna have a public address system or music, the answer is yes. It seems the song of a cicada is on a similar frequency as a public address system, a lawnmower, a weed whacker, 
or a plane load of people trying to get away from three different species of 17-year cicadas that have taken over the town. Oh, the jet, as you hear when the jet goes over, uh, the cast and I start singing like crazy because the, some of the jet engines actually are at the same frequency as a chorusing center. So the jet goes over and all these cicadas that are basically right now because it's cloudy, hanging out, thinking, well, there's not much action going on. And all of a sudden, they start singing like crazy because they think there's thousands of cicadas singing around with them, and even though it's just a jet. Mount St. Joseph College in Cincinnati is ground zero for the study of cicada behavior. You know, remember that picture I showed you? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little brownish looking like thing. Dr. Jean Kritzke has been studying cicadas most of his adult life. She is filled with eggs. Trying to debunk the many myths about a creature misunderstood for centuries. The uh, name was misapplied back as early as 1715 by English settlers when they were trying to make sense of what the cicadas were doing. So they turned to the J King James Version of the Bible. And there are several passages, about 12 indeed, that uh, uh, describe in part some aspect of cicada biology and natural history. And they were, all the passages deal with locusts. One reason for the biblical plague reputation may have to do with the way cicadas suddenly show up in such uncountable numbers emerging from holes in the ground, turning a manicured lawn into a holy horror. If that's 350, that could even be up to 400 per yard, that's, that's really heavy. And that means this, this little yard, this little stretch right here probably had, oh, one, two, probably 25,000 cicadas emerged just in this little front patch here. Unlike a plague of locusts, cicadas eat nothing after they emerge. They live only to reproduce, and once that happens, apparently there is no reason to go on. At this moment, the, uh, the real intensity is the, oh, I got a good smell of the cicadas here. In a matter of weeks, billions of cicada corpses litter sidewalks and lawns. Dr. Kritzke says he can track the progress of the emergence by the order of the phone calls he gets every 17 years. When are they going to come out? Will they hurt my trees? Oh, I found an albino cicada. That's so they don't understand the transformation process of the adult. Uh, when will the singing stop? And then, what's that smell? Before they can ask that final question, the people here know that cicadas are a fact of daily life they'll just have to get used to. Not that it will be easy. They're around all the time, it seems like. They're driving nuts. No, it doesn't bother me. It's, it's nature and uh, you get used to it. I do like the noise of the cicadas. They are mesmerizing to me. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not easy for most people to love a two-inch insect with the habit of buzzing anything that moves. And like what just happened. You know, the thing just flies right into your face and ear. That's startling. People don't like being startled by them. Uh, that uh, is part of the annoyance factor. But annoyance is one thing. Fear is another. My daughter is hysterical. She's now 25. And she won't even get out of the car outside. She will, you have to pull in the garage, close the garage door, and then she'll get out. Absolutely nothing to be afraid of. They don't sting, they don't bite, they don't claw, they don't do anything. But people don't like to feel that on their neck. Get off. The fear is, is entophobia, the fear of insects. People don't like this bugs crawling on their naked skin. Plain and simple. Get over it. We need to move on with life. The sudden appearance of the 17-year cicadas may no longer inspire the wrath of God visions of less enlightened times. In the midst of the latest emergence, there are signs that fear has given way to fascination, but only up to a point. People don't like bugs, and that's the problem. It's the cicadas using time as a survival strategy. You want me to be right here? When World Report continues, the cicadas turn a scientist into a celebrity. <laughs> 